Hi guys, welcome to Leap Alive. Previously, we tested the difference between Apple Pro Raw and normal photos taken on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched our last video yet, click the link in the description to check out how the Apple Pro Raw compared to the normal iPhone non-RAW. Then come back when you're done. So the Pro Raw did a very amazing job at capturing very stunning photos while keeping most of the data for more professional post-processing. Which makes me curious, how would the Apple Pro RAW hold up against an actual RAW file from a professional camera? But before we jump into the video, please do us a favor by scrolling down and press the subscribe button to see more great contents in the future. We really appreciate it. Now, let's get into the video, shall we? As promised, we took the iPhone 12 Pro Max and went toe-to-toe -to -toe against the almighty Sony A7 camera. These are the criteria for the test. We choose a camera with a lens that we could get our hands on, that has a focal length and an aperture that are closest to the one from the iPhone, which is 26mm f1.6. The closest we could find is actually A7 Mark III and the A7C with the Tamron 24mm f2.8 lens. And since there is no manual mode on the iPhone, we set the camera into auto, just to be fair. On the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the ISO can go up to 7616, so we limit the ISO on the camera to 6400, and we will leave the rest for the camera to decide. We will treat the Pro RAW just like the normal RAW file. We import and edit them in the Lightroom to see their full capability. A little bit of disclaimer. The Sony cameras has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, while the iPhone 12 Pro Max only has a tiny little 12 megapixel sensor. And on top of that, Sony's photo is 14 bit RAW file versus the iPhone 12 bit RAW. So, yeah, the Sony would definitely perform better due to the larger sensor, larger pixels, and higher resolution. But I'm comparing the two to give you guys an idea how far the computational and smartphone photography has come. Moving on to the first photo. In a good lighting condition, the two are comparable. And this is what Apple Pro RAW looks like when importing to Lightroom. And when edited, they both remain comparable. But when you start to zooming in, you will notice that there is more noise on the iPhone while the Sony still looks clean. The Pro RAW images looks really crisp, but that's because of the digital sharpening done by the iPhone. Still, it's a 12 megapixel versus a 24 megapixel. The iPhone is really doing an impressive job here. Moving on to the next photo, there's more color data to be dug up on the Sony's RAW file. Personally, I wouldn't edit like this though. Take a look at this flower. The purple flower on the Pro RAW looks more pale than the, on the Sony's. And the orange on these waves are more saturated on the Sony. The yellow background just looks more natural on the Sony, while the Pro RAW has a little neon tint on it. But there's less difference in the graffiti photo. Color in many parts looks identical. The noticeable differences are the, in the purple color, which looks a little pale on the Pro RAW. Here, I shot at a couple stops underexposed and tried to recover the shadow. Sony's shadow contains more data, more detail on the Sony like these tiles, right here. You can see the pattern of the tiles clearly here in the Sony, while there are noises everywhere on the Pro RAW. When recovering the shadow in this photo, the Pro RAW appears to be generally brighter, but the obvious difference is in the color of the leaves. The color on the Sony is more preserved and looks a little bit more natural. On top of that, the sky on the Sony can be dropped much lower than on the Pro RAW. This time, I shot a couple stops overexposed, just to see how much of the highlight can be recovered in post. Sony's photos contain much more dynamic range than on the Pro RAW. However, the sky on the Pro RAW looks a tad bit more natural. The Sony's shadow can be brought up 
a lot brighter than on the Pro RAW. There are parts in the Pro RAW that the shadow has been crushed, while the Sony is still preserved most of the details. The overall highlight is well controlled on the Sony, where many areas on the Pro RAW is still overexposed. Moreover, there are more contrasts between colors throughout the image on the Sony as well. Now, let's move on to the low light. The Pro RAW looks really good when used on the photo app, but when we import into the Lightroom, it is overexposed, while the Sony looks dim straight out of the camera. When edited, you can see that the Pro RAW starts to break, the images loses the contrast and the colors, while the Sony still looks pretty punchy and well saturated. There is less noise on the iPhone, but after adding some noise reduction, the Sony instantly looks a lot cleaner with a lot more details. In the night mode with 8 seconds of exposure on the Pro RAW looks really clean. It even looks cleaner than on the Sony. There are tons of noises everywhere on the Sony. Because the ISO was set at 6400, I tried to fix the noise problem but it still doesn't come close to look as clean as the Pro RAW. The white dots on the sky of the Pro RAW are probably flare reflection rather than stars, but there are stars as well, here. It is really incredible for a phone sensor to be able to capture this much detail in an image. That's about it for now. Sure, the Sony A7 outperforms the iPhone in most part, but the iPhone is no joke as well. Just remember that this is an $1,100 phone, while this one is a $2,000 camera. Of course, the camera will perform better. But it's still very impressive that the iPhone can perform this close to a full-frame camera. If you showed me the Pro RAW photos just even a year ago, I wouldn't believe that they are made from phone camera. And for those who want the RAW files to go play around, just click on the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time, stay safe.